welcome to another edition of Public Opinion with your host, Pam and Vanetta. We're so excited to have our guests for this week and again to celebrate the month of June. And like I said last week, the month of June is about graduations. You were at a graduation last week. Graduation weddings. And you have and, a wedding coming up. And proms and getaways. Yeah, <laughs> vacationing. And um, your son is getting married this month. He's getting married yeah. in two weeks. I went for my dress fitting today and for everybody who was worried, I can now fit the dress. <laughs> well, that, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Well, you know what? June is also Gay Pride Month. Yes. So, is. you know, public opinion, we don't want to leave anybody out. And we will be celebrating Gay Pride Month right here on the Public Opinion Show. And we have some guests today um, who are going to help us celebrate the Gay Pride Month. Yes. I've seen more great Gay Pride this year than any other year, I think. Uh, or maybe it's just mm -hmm. that I'm paying more attention. I don't know. Really? flags, everything. Just I think a, people are just happy and ready to just do everything. Okay, I think that's what Show off whatever yeah. they do. But you know, I did some, um, a little research for the show about gay pride. And I didn't know that Bill Clinton actually was the first president to declare June uh, LBGT gay pride month. And mm -hmm. it's 1999 and 2000. And then when Barack Obama became president, every year that he was president, he declared June LGBT Gay Pride Month. So no, for I did not know that. I didn't know that either. And then this year, Joe Biden declared uh, June Gay Pride Month. Oh, so, yes. So good, good Republican uh, president. Uh, yeah. Good. So uh, I'm excited about our guests, and um, so let's find out who our participants are. First, we have Larry Webb. Larry is an attorney and LGBTQ advocate. He is the founder and former executive director of Blackout Unlimited Incorporated. Next, we have Rita Knight Gray. Rita is a retired reference librarian, act, archivist, and information collector and provider. So let's welcome our participants. Hi to the both of you, and thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm excited to hear what your responses are to the public opinion question. We're excited to have the both of you. And so let's get started and see what that public opinion question is. Growing up feeling different, how did it affect you, your family, and or friends? And I'm going to get started. and. Rita, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to answer that question. So you can just go ahead. Okay. Um, growing up different. Well, I've always been different. I've basically been a very precocious child. And the way that my family uh, raised me, especially my mother, uh, that wasn't a problem. Um, I'm a little bit from the, I graduated in 1967. So I'm a little bit older. And during that time period, um, Basically, the things that happened um, happened outside of the bubble that I grew up in. Um, part of my family was in the arts. So in the arts, there's a great deal of uh, gay people. So uh, being familiar and being around was not a major ordeal. It wasn't a problem. Um, I was different in the sense that uh, I sort of raised myself. And in a lot of ways, um, I was still searching. And it took a while, I guess you can say, really when things really opened up was when I was in, in my 50s and 40s, 50s, when I went out to LA and was trying to get into the film business and things went in a different uh, position. Uh, I never came out to my mother, but uh, my mother was very intelligent, so she knew. I never came out to my family because my family is relatively intelligent and they knew. So me running out and saying, look, I'm gay was not a big deal. And if anybody asked me, they would get an answer. So when I was growing up, it really wasn't a major deal. I mean, I grew up with, um, which I think maybe Larry might remember, but he's not from Cleveland, so I'm not sure. But I grew up with uh, Tony. Freddie, uh, Roland, Forte, 
and we all went to school together. In most cases, uh, we were protecting them and most of the guys were just hanging. So problems weren't really a big deal during my growing out and feeling different was something that we all wanted to be. Uh, nobody followed crowds during that time. Nobody followed anyone during that time. They put forth their own persona. They created their own selves. It wasn't until I would say the 1970s into the 80s when people started following people. And I never did that. I did my own thing. People did their own thing. And so basically I, I look at it as it wasn't a major problem. All right. That's interesting. And we're going to uh, talk about that after we hear what Larry has to say. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, yeah, that is actually very interesting. Um, so um, I was born um, as Rita was graduating. Um, so I was born in 68. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I think I, I think I began to feel different. Um, and I, I don't know that I would have thought it was different, but thought that something else was going on with me around seventh grade. Um, that's when I really sort of identified that I may have interests that were not aligned with um, the culture. Um, and so I've known for a very, very long time. Um, I don't know that, um, that I had necessarily put a, a, a moniker on it um, at that time, but I knew. Um, I was a sensitive child, so I recall as a kid, and, and this would be the negative, I recall as a kid um, being called punk um, or, you know, they, they didn't call me queer or, or, or sissy because that wasn't the term of art um, in St. Louis in the 70s, the, the term. Um, so those are not trigger words for me. Punk um, is a trigger word for me uh, because of that, right? I mean, I'm not now, but for a long time it was because that, that was the thing that, that you didn't want to be. That was the thing that you did not, that you did not want to be called that. It was less than, you know, it was weak. It was all those types mm -hmm. of different things. Um, but as a child, um, that was probably forced upon me, um, that concept in a way that I did not necessarily embrace. Um, and um, the idea of being different was something that people pointed out to me before I necessarily, um, definitely before I sexualized anything, right? I just knew that I had attractions. You know, I knew I liked the boy on television versus the girl on television. Um, and so that was sort of my early um, experience um, and, and sort of um, understanding early on that um, it was something to be kept private. That was the that was the other that was the difference that was the othering, you know. It became very clear, and you know, kids are 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 are, are very intuitive, and they learn very quickly. And so that was the thing that I learned very quickly that whatever interest I had, whatever um, attractions, and once again, these were not sexual attractions. They were just like you would have a little uh, little boy, little girl would have a crush on the teacher. I would have a crush on the boy on the male teacher versus the female teacher. Um, or, you know, the, the boy next door versus the girl next door. Um, but once again, and in, in not in a sexualized fashion. Um, the other thing that kind of stands out, and I know we're going to talk longer, the other thing that kind of stands out for me is um, something I've shared in other, at other times when I've talked about the subject. I was a devourer of information because I knew I was, I knew that there was something different. I would go to any book, any book in the library and look up homosexual because you know that's the term that was used. I don't care if it was a biography. I don't care if it was a science book. I don't care if it was um, a history book. I would look in every book and look for those terms and for myself begin to define and identify what that was and how it, how it was going to work in my life. Um, All right, Larry. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, that was just part of of of, of me trying to figure it out for myself. Um, people had written about you were, it. You were actually uh, studying. Yes. Studying. Yes. yes. So, I was so that, you know, so yes. when you yes. said you would look up, um, when you were looking up homosexuality, is it because, and then at what age were you doing that? Were you oh, doing you know, this was like, um, um, Middle school, high school, like I, re I remember being in our library at high school 
and literally going through the books. Um, you know, once again, biographies, um, it, whatever the topic, um, and looking uh, up those, uh, uh, that was my search terms, whatever, you know, gay, you know, bisexual. But so you were feeling like, like, had you heard that, when was the, the first time you heard the term, was it like from television? Was it somebody said something to you or, or what? Well, you know, the, the things that were said to me, I, I discussed with you before, the, the sort of idea of, you know, uh, being a punk or, you know, the, you know, oh. I, I lived in, I lived in um, um, public housing. I grew oh. up in public housing in St. Louis. Um, and so there were, there were people in the community that were identified uh, mostly as trans, we would call them transgender now, you know, back in the day, they would call them drag queen or, or what have you, whatever sort of sometimes derogatory, not always um, terms. Yeah. Um, those are the people that were identified. And there was always an othering and a fear mongering around it. You know, don't let those people near you. Don't go, you know, that kind of thing. And so, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you have to sort of unwrap as an adult, as a young adult. And and, and sort of chart your own course because we all just like as, as brown and black and brown people, we hear the sort of um, derogatory things around black people that we have to unpack and unload for myself. Those were the types of things that I had to unload. So I had heard those terms. I really don't recall when I specifically heard the term homosexual. I, I went to a gifted school uh, when I was in grade school and, and, and high school. So I think I probably heard it there you know, and even then there were movies. I remember Making Love was this movie that came out in the in the 80s with, um, I, I think, Harry Hamlin or something like that. And I think it was like one of the first movies that came out that really sort of talked about it. And, and, and once again, in retrospect, lots of problematic things with the movie. But at the time, one of the first movies that came out about a married man and coming out to his wife and the whole thing. And so I had heard the term and, and based on what I had found and, and seen and heard. Um, now, Rita, when did you first hear the term, or, or like like Larry was saying that um, he was called, you know, a punk? Where where did people use? Did how did people actually treat you? Uh, they didn't. Uh, I, like I said, I didn't have any problems. Uh, but other people around me, uh, while I was going to school, there was. Um, they were called punk was one sissy was the other um yeah because i remember when i was growing up that's pretty much what people just call people sissies that, that was the word sissy. then you know mm -hmm. the word then was a, a sissy yeah, there and wasn't it, too you know, many yeah. basically um i'm similar to uh larry um since uh i was like i said a precocious child so my mother supplied all the ammunition in regards to me learning things. So I would be looking up things and gathering information. Mm -hmm. So um, I could find out what the terms were. I could understand what people went through. Mm -hmm. I understood partially what I was going through. And in a sense, mine was like, like not an all out, let me jump out and be gay. Basically it was like uh, some people go through where they're both involved with uh, male and female. So uh, it was sort of like a stepping stone. But as far as me uh, being attacked, maybe because people didn't know, maybe because of my persona and the way I carried myself. But uh, as far as me jumping out and telling people, look what I am, um, that wasn't my persona, period. Now, so, don't, yeah, don't, go ahead. I, don't you think it's different though for women they don't uh, attach a name as easily as they do. Uh -uh. No, no, it's not different. They do attach a name. If you don't carry yourself in the in the form of being uh, a feminine type of female, a name is automatically attached. Um, I went to school. I was part of the girls' gym leaders club. Um, I hung with all of them. Uh, we never had a problem. I never had a problem. But like I said, I carry myself the way I like to carry myself. I don't imitate. I don't template anyone else. I am me. And if you don't like me, that's your problem. Now, Larry, Larry, how was your family? Did your family know you were gay or did you have to tell them or did they just oh, say, I they know knew. Gay? They knew. Some of the people that were calling me those names were family members. <laughs> um, so they absolutely knew. They knew before I did. Because, you know, once again, 
you know, as a child, and, and, and I will say they identified traits, right? Um, they didn't know anything. They identified traits and then named it for themselves. Um, um, and so, yeah, it was family members. Um, what I will say is I was never, uh, I was never attacked. Um, I mean, let me put this in, in better context. I was never physically attacked, attacked, partly because I came from a very large family. Um, and they <laughs> might say that to me, but they would never let anybody yeah. else. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So you they would come in this circle. Yes. Right. They would poke fun at me. You know, my aunt, because, you know, I'm the oldest grandchild of my grandmother had 11 kids. I'm the oldest grandchild. My mom's the oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. And basically, my mom raised all of them. So by the time she got to me, she had already raised, <laughs> you know, all these other kids. I used to think I'm my only child. I'm her only child. No, she had already raised a bunch of kids. And then I came along. Um, and so I have uncles and aunts that are really my peers. Um, and so just like we would call one of them, one of them would pee in the bed, so we would make fun of him. One of them really wasn't a very good student. We make fun of him. That was their thing for me. That was their that was their poke at me. Um, you're a punk, you know. You're soft or whatever. Um, but what I will say is I was never attacked, um, and because of that sort of village I had around me, um, um, and, and quite frankly. You know, I, I talk about the terms. Some people in the neighborhood may have said something, you know, those types of things. Um, but quite frankly, it was illuminating for me. It, it was not necessarily something that, in retrospect, that caused me great pain. Um, because I just took it and said, okay, let me go find out what this is that they, you know, because I'm a kid. And, you know, you're calling me something. So let me go find out what it is that you're calling me um, and what that means. And does and do I actually identify with that? Um, I think as a young adult, the thing that I used to be frustrated by, and I don't want to um, take up too much time. Um, I was frustrated by, I remember being, in, I think it was in high school and being frustrated by the fact that, that people had called me something. Even though I didn't identify with the name, I knew what they were saying. And they had identified it before I had. And so that you, was, found, you found the frustration part to be the fact that they had identified that and, and you they, had not yet? Yeah, they had identified it and I had not and that they colored it. That was really my frustration, that they colored it in what would have been, you know, uh, 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 once again, it was, it was meant to be a point of pain. It was meant to be derogatory. It was meant oh, to okay. other me. And that was, you know, as a teenager, as I, as I became um, to sort of embrace who I was, as I became to, you know, understand and get comfortable in my own skin, I'm like, ain't this a, you know, because, you know, they were unsuccessful, but they wanted to, um, to harm me in some way. Um, and once again, sometimes it's the people that are close to you that, that do that. Um, but they were not successful. No. Yeah. Now, <laughs> did the both of you have um, significant others or um, in any relationships or? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, actually, I'm in love with myself because it took me this long to get to that point. So I'm enjoying myself. Uh, and I'm at this. Show okay. Our show you last can week. add a twist to that. Yeah, you Single can, and gay. Yes. Because last so, week's show was about I'm single, so what? <laughs> that's basically it. Um, because it took this, it took that long for me to uh, get to the point. Because right now I'm 72. Well, I'll be 72 in August. Don't. And, I, don't I refuse that. You don't see it. You don't I, see she it. She working that now. I refuse that statement. I don't believe that. That's artists. Anyway, so I'm just um, I'm just enjoying myself and getting ready to enjoy the rest of my life. Uh, if something happens, that's great. If not, I don't care because uh, I'm happy. <laughs> and, and that's what you know what really comes down to it. I think people should just be happy. They should find happiness exactly. in whatever state they're in. And other people, I just, and I guess I consider myself to be, I don't know, a, I don't know if you call it an ally or, or what, you, I just think that it's not anybody's business who you want to be with. And if, it, if, right. if it's going to be an issue, 
then you deal with your creator, you know, let, let that, but I'm not going to be the person that's going to cause it to be an issue. You I, know, and it's too many other things for us to be worried about. Right. Yeah. I think if it's that's a problem for, sure. for you, you remove yourself from a situation yeah, versus just, yeah, trying I mean, to, you know, put some hurt on someone else. And, yeah. and, that, and that's been common. Like I can say growing up, I can remember my family member saying, oh, he got a little sugar in his tea. Oh yeah, they, yeah, that's that, 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 that was something. And I, but but let me say this: they never said it to the person. Okay, it was a behind your back yeah, kind of statement. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I now know that that was meant to even be more hurtful in some ways. In some in ways, some I ways. think you're right. Uh, you know, yeah. um, I, I was. You know, you asked a, a question. Um, I actually got married about a year and a half ago now. Um, Congratulations! Thank you. Um, um, and I don't want to tell. Um, uh, I won't tell Rita's story, but. She has always been single. So anyway, I will. I will. I will she has not always been single. So I will. You you asked the question a very specific way. The lawyer in me is like, hmm, might want to re-ask that question um, um, because you said today, um, and so um, that is true of her today. Um, but I will say, yeah, um, which is very interesting to me. I won't uh, once again take too much time. I um, most of my adult life, I was not. Um, I have been in relationships, um, but I've been in short-term relationships, you know, maybe six months, maybe a year. Um, and it's funny, Rita will know this. Um, we've known each other for a very long time. Um, when I turned 40, I said, um, so you need to get comfortable with the concept that you may just not, this may not work for you. And are you okay? And I was fortunate that I had a mother who, um, was got a divorce when I was three, I think had one other maybe significant relationship when I was like in a second grade for a few mm -hmm. years and we you know, mm -hmm. lived with someone, um, but never held another man out after that. Um, and you know, if she dated or whatever, it was private, they weren't coming over to the house and that type right. of thing. And she had a wonderful, fantastic dynamic life. And so I, that was what was emulated to me. And mm -hmm. so I was like, well, if this is what happens if I'm going to be single, then, you know, maybe we'll have some companionship every now and again, but we'll just hang out with our friends and travel and enjoy life and, and, and do it that way. And it was literally maybe a year later that um, I had actually known my husband, um, but we weren't friends. I knew who he was and, and we talked, um, but it was a, about a year after that, that we um, started dating and um, then I moved to DC and then a couple years later he moved here and then that's all she wrote. Um, so now DC is a good place to be a gay person, isn't it? It is actually, um, well, it, de <laughs> it depends. It depends. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's no, Midwestern cities are not great. It's just no. not true. No, no. So I, I so the, 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 the depends is on what measure. Um, okay. um, as a, as a out black gay man, I am, you can throw a rock and hit another out black gay man in DC. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yes. you, can, you can throw a rock and hit another out black gay lawyer in DC. Um, sure um <laughs> so, um, on that regard, um, I am not a, uh, I'm not a trailblazer in Cleveland. I was a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. um, I was very much a trailblazer there, you know, starting a, a African American LGBT organization, nonprofit, um, you know, being a black gay man who was out like, um, but I also have to say it was tiring, um, which is one of the reasons that I left. It was just tiring. You know, I, I, I was tired of swimming upstream. Yep. Um, I was tired of swimming against the grain, uh, you know, <laughs> moving against the grain, um, mixing my metaphors there. Um, it, you know, it just get, it just got tiring. I I really appreciate being run of the mill um, here. You know, um, I appreciate being in a place where um, people have traveled to more countries than I have and have had experiences that I haven't had and mm -hmm. can provide inspiration to me in a way that I was not inspired in Cleveland anymore. And, you know, I have family in Cleveland. I have friends in Cleveland. My you know most of my adult life was spent in Cleveland but yeah that that was my experience there um as, as, a, as a as a as a black gay man Correction. I did have relationships they just didn't uh mean anything so uh, <laughs> a 
reveal. We so you never knew about them right. yes. because yeah, I didn't want to come and cry on your shoulder. Yeah, so that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it was my during my time that I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And and finding out that all the things that I put on the list that you're supposed to be looking for um, just didn't fit. And I kept fudging on the list, so to speak, and then finding out that, no, don't do that because you're still not getting what you want. So then when I found out, like I said, that I was the cause and I needed the work and I needed to change, that's when I realized that the list that I had was something that you throw away. And my other list is, I don't have a list, but I do love me. And if you don't fit with me loving me, then then I guess it won't be. And that's basically it. And yes, Larry was the trailblazer. I was part of it. A bunch of us, would, we were trying to do a great number of things. And um, unfortunately, at that time, there were too many people that were trying to do their other great thing. And um, which is weird in a sense or not. Um, I was trying to find out why there was a difference in regards to uh, basically when white people ask black people, why is, do you have this mm-hmm. per saying what they have? Like, why do you have your own Greek right. sororities yeah. and fraternities? And why do you have that? And explaining to folks that there is a big difference on the treatment and right now I'm in the middle. Actually, I'm on the outside, Larry. I was going to call you one night and just I look forward to it. <laughs> I look forward because to because of 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 the the new. I don't know if you've been to see the new center and all that, yeah. but I've seen pictures of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and my biggest concern was uh, like it was in the AIDS, and I hated to say it's the AIDS day, but that's when that was the only time that um, the gay community was outstretched to everyone. Yeah. I mean, there was a around, place. A, a common, a common, yes. Yeah. yeah. On the east side, there was some place for the kids to go because uh, everything was on the west side. Now everything is primarily on the west side. And my comment to them, uh, I told, I asked Phyllis, I said, why don't you have a satellite at least on the east side? Uh, because there are a lot of kids. I run into them while I'm at the gas station, you know, asking for bus fare because they want to go to West 65th. And when they say that, I know exactly where they're going. Mm-hmm. And so they're no, what, to get you there. want to explain to us because we don't know what it oh, is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will. I will yes. Um, yes. We want to know. If, if I could. Yeah. If I go could, ahead. Go ahead, Larry. Go yeah. Ahead. So, um, what 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 Rita is referring to, um, sort of historically, and then and then present day. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason that we started the organization is because I had volunteered at the Gay Center, the, I think the original Gay Center, yeah. um, as, as so many other Black people did, mm-hmm. and talked with the boards of, of the center um, and said, hey, so you're on the west side of Cleveland. Cleveland's still Cleveland. I mean, I think it's a little different now, but this was, when I was there, it was the early 90s. Rita has a, a longer experience. Um, and people you know, saw the west side as one way and saw the east side as another way, right? And so if you're housed on the west side, um, that that in, in, itself, in itself is a barrier. And so we talked about bridging those gaps. And, and what happens and what happens so often, unfortunately, when people of color go to majority organizations, what you hear is, you're absolutely right. And we have that on our list. But we have this other priority right right the bigger agenda mm-hmm. right that we want to get yep, to first yep, yep. Mm-hmm. and when we get that done yeah we'll be happy to embrace happy your to cause talk. because it is worthy it yep. is worthy. the center <laughs> still exists it's moved to some new locations they they, they had a capital campaign and street. opened up um, opened up a new center across the street but um, she was speaking to the, the the leader of the organization who is a who is a black woman about how do you still bridge that gap? Because there's still a barrier. Um, and now there aren't as many um, um, opportunities for black and brown kids uh, to- well, Actually, um, let me interrupt you on this because going back to, you're gonna do a show on the millennials because of the younger generation and their attitude about the whole situation of identifying who they are, there are more um, black and brown uh, plus cues and yeah. everything else at the center. 
which is a good thing. I'm not pissed off at it, but I still say this is a big city and I'm quite sure in other cities, they do have like satellites on the other side or satellites in the other area for kids to have a place to go and then go to the larger headquarters. That, that was my talk in regards to that. And not only kids, just the seniors. I mean, I'm a senior, but you know, <laughs> All of the seniors, they're senior gays who, yeah, who they are yeah. just say, I don't have the time to get over to the West side. <laughs> and, 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 and that's what I'm saying. And then trying to start a group on the East side. So it, it's changed. Yes. Uh, it's good that they have it. That's a yes. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, I think you're pouring, they're pouring too much into that one location and not thinking about the all over. So that that was my comment in regards to that. But he told the whole story, and, that, and that's <laughs> no, basically I'm what I'm it was like. Clarify that, yeah, I was just giving the history. Yes, I work for yep. an organization. It's an autism organization, and I will say that I was really surprised that they have a group within our autism organization for gay people, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's really great that you're thinking of everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and it, it this is a group that people would even think okay. If, you have autism, mm -hmm. you would think you don't have time to do anything else but have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Right. Right. You got autistic and gay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, there's, there's autistic and gay, there's deaf and gay, there's blind and gay. I mean, the, the reality is every, every um, demographic, every socioeconomic class, every, you know, every race, every country, like, it, it exists. Um, and so, um, yeah. But I, I, I can understand your surprise, but yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> but yeah, no, but I mean, it's, it's about embracing uh, just everybody and just loving people as, as human beings. Yeah. Um, and now that you're and now that you're married, I, I'm sure you know that people have a little joke to say same sex, same problem. So it's like, I'm That's sure as a married person, you're yeah, still you, experiencing the same kind of problem well, well, that of other course. married people are going to experience. You know? Of course. I mean, so. what are we getting from the grocery store? When when what are we what are okay. we doing for our vacation? Um, why didn't <laughs> you tell me this? Um, <laughs> Did you pay this oh. bill? You know, right. okay. 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 it's same okay. as that. Yeah, because you know, bills the, don't care what what your sexual right. orientation okay. is. It's got it to be paid. Not. And I guarantee you, just like in my home, one is a spender and okay. one is a saver. And you just got to so, figure it out. Yeah, got to figure yeah. it out. You know, I think that that is the, the, if people, and I think more people have, and 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 the more the more exposed people are, the more gay people have exposed themselves and not in a, you know, exposed who they are and felt open to having these conversations, the more people realize that the differences that you wanted to concentrate on were the smallest of the differences. Mm -hmm. um, and that human beings, regardless of race or sexuality or country, um, seek love, seek companionship, seek mm -hmm. comfort, seek support. And those are the real um, foundational things that yes. bring us together. And I'm gonna let you stop right there because uh, we are out of time, but that's oh, a no. way to end this. It really, <laughs> yeah. it really is. But I didn't want to uh, leave it without it. Rita, was there anything else that you yeah, wanted absolutely. to say? Oh, not really. The, the, the primary thing is what he was saying. And the other thing is, I know that in some cases, some people uh, don't believe that uh, um, people are born that way and then yes there are people that aren't born that way but they are curious and it's just the human nature of folk that that's my belief it's just the human nature of people and uh some people just have to believe that that's not your human nature that's fine but don't try to chastise attack and try to destroy somebody else's because that's theirs mm -hmm. that's my only comment well, thank you both so much. I'm, I'm, I have thank enjoyed you. this conversation. Sure. Thank really, you. Thank really you for having us. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Well, that was great. Don't you think, Vanessa? So interesting. It was interesting. I learned a lot. You know, I, I did. I, what I really learned, which is what I always thought going into it, is just that people are just people. That's right. And yeah. all you want to be is loved and respected in this world. Exactly. And it, we have to be as like, I, I feel like it as a black person, you know, you're always on guard and different things, mm -hmm. but I think we have to be far more aware of what's going on with our people. Yeah. Because yeah. I think 
I, I didn't even think of it before now as a marginalized community inside of another marginalized it's community. Right. Okay. Exactly. Because I yeah. did kind of think that um, if you were gay, one other gay person viewed you as equal and the same. But isn't that something though? You still, there's still that marginalization going on, like you said, inside mm -hmm. of that. But, you know, for, like I said, I just think for, what's most important is that we are all human beings. Right. And that we have to be accepting of each other as human beings. You don't necessarily have to accept anybody's sexual orientation, no. but you do have to be respectful and just love people as, as just people. As and people, I think that's, that's what's right. important. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment as much as we did. And we'll see you next time for another episode of Public Opinion, because everybody's entitled to their own opinion. <laughs> <laughs>